You're from the same group, right? Yeah, same group. Yes, you're yeah. from the same oh. group of Rolf Drexler, and <laughs> this is uh, Sajad. It's uh, a bit. So he's doing the next presentation. Okay, let me just check on this one. Yeah, I will skip using the presenter. So. Okay. So, okay. thank you very much. Let's get started. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Sajid Parvin. I'm from University of Bremen, Germany. And uh, today I'm here to talk about a little bit different topic than everybody else. And my concern about the open source is a bit different than uh, most of you here. So, you will get it. And the talk is Raddopa, uh, Robustifying a Design Against uh, Optical Probing Attack, which Raddopa is a Persian word for a foot trace, actually. So, uh, yeah. And a little bit, a bit about our group, as Salar mentioned. Uh, I'm working at AGRA, which is directed by uh, Professor Rolf Drexler. And uh, I work mainly on circuit design, which is mostly on layout level, and contact contactless optical probing, or any uh, uh, non-invasive attacks. So what is the motivation of the uh, non-invasive attacks? So, there are different packages uh, that we have for chips, and uh, some of these uh, chips are wire bonded. And uh, so you have a stack of layers, uh, a stack of metal layers on top of a chip. And uh, so from the front side, you have metal, so using contactless, such as using optics to read out the signals in your chip is pretty impossible because you have uh, metals, so it will reflect back. But if you have flip chip, which is shown here, uh, for say the Kintec 7 FPGA, it's in the flip chip package, so, and uh, the substrate is exposed to the user that is using the chip. And it is uh, the, the attacker has a motivation to steal your uh, intellectual property that is a stored on a chip for, say, a stored keys that are on a chip. And uh, using backside attacks, which is done uh, through optical probing, it has a least headache because uh, uh, the Backside is exposed, and uh, attacker can use laser, which are in the near infrared region lights, can attack the chip, and uh, all the signal that are processed inside the chip can be uh, extracted. And as I mentioned, there is no metal layer on the backside, so there is no per need for preparation or thinning of the backside of the chip. And uh, silicon is transparent, and if we use lights in the range of uh, 1,000 nanometer to 1,300 nanometer, we can uh, pass through the silicon and read out the signals on the chip. And this attack is known as optical probing. So I will give a basic background on optical probing and what it is in the few next style, uh, slides and give some uh, explanation on different uh, extension of optical probing. So the first, I mean, the first thing is the optical probing basics. So the basic is, is that when you hit a chip, or the, to be more specific, a region of a, a transistor with a laser light, and that la uh, region is the active region of a transistor, which is, has an electrical field, and by an input that you're applying to the chip, the region is getting modulated. So then uh, the light that you are shining over your uh, chip will get modulated, and uh, then you can detect it at the detector, which is shown here, and uh, you can detect what was the value that was being processed at that region. So the first, uh, oh yeah, and the first uh, extension of the optical probing is called EOP, so basically you park your laser at uh, some point of the uh, chip, and the beam is stationary, you want to read out the waveform that is being analyzed into the, I mean, on the chip. So if this is the internal uh, signal of the chip, and you, have, you hit it with a laser, this is what you get, because the signal is so noisy, but you can uh, deduce what was the value being processed at that uh, spot. So whether it's zero or one, so you can clearly see it. And the other uh, extension is called electro-optical frequency mapping. So or uh, laser voltage imaging, LVI. Uh, you scan the whole region of a uh, chip, 
So you, you're trying to find out, reach, uh, creating an activity map of a chip. So basically, you want to find out the regions that are working at certain frequencies. So those uh, regions, you know that you want to attack an AES block on a chip, and you know that it's working at, for say, 2 megahertz, and you want to find various that uh, region that is working at 2 megahertz. So this is uh, where EOFM comes into the play. So for say, as an example, we have one region at 1 megahertz and one region at 2 megahertz. We scan the whole region of the chip using our laser, and then we feed the detectors output to the a uh, bandpass filter at 2 megahertz, and we are creating a 2D sampling, and voila, this is our uh, region that is operating at 2 megahertz, so we uh, detect it. And now we can use the previous method, park our laser there, read out the value there. The other extension is called LSI, which you, you are interested in, to the, uh, in probing or creating an activity map of all the values on the transistors, uh, a static, I mean, a static uh, a state of each transistor in your design. So what you do, you just modulate your uh, power supply by 100 millivolt, and then again, you just like probe it uh, uh, 100 millivolt and at 100 kilohertz. Uh, sinusoidal signal. And then you uh, scan your whole area of a chip and 2D sampling and then all the regions that are uh, having a static uh, states will be shown and you can just deduce whether this logic, uh, this logic cell is uh, output is one or zero or uh, any other combination that it can have based on the input you applied. So we developed a simul simulator to perform optical probing for us. And we model the laser as a Gaussian distribution. And then we have our layout. And we model the layout as a polygon. And this polygon includes all the uh, silicon information. And then uh, 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 we model this, uh, val the reflection value of it. And this uh, mo uh, polygon contains the uh, information about the voltage that is present at that region, or doping, concentration, etc. And then for creating activity map, we conv convolve our uh, laser point uh, with the uh, layout, and then we create an activity map. You can, show, you can see it here on the uh, right side. And uh, we, we model only the active regions, so don't be scared of the formula. It's just like we call it RCV, this uh, uh, reflection value. And then we create a geometry model, a library of this uh, reflection model based on the input that is applied, which we model uh, the active region for uh, each of the gates based on the input that is applied. For say, for the inverter, we have two states that the input can have, uh, it's whether it's zero or one. So we modeled the geometry in uh, the following uh, approach. And then we create a bunch of this model for other gates in the library, NAND2, XR2, and etc. And we investigated various logic families to see whether, I mean, how robust they are. So we went through uh, logic family that exist. I mean, that we found them a bit uh, uh, attractive for our application. And by application, I mean they are more robust toward optical probing attack. They can prevent optical probing. So we modeled them and as follow. So we calculated the RCV of the each region based on the uh, input value that we applied. And then we found this graph. And this graph shows the results of each of these logic families that we used. And we compare everything to CMOS. Why? Because CMOS, we ha it has been shown that it can be attacked. So, for say, if we have an inverter, a uh, CMOS inverter or NAND2, we, we care about this, like how high it is, this RCV value. So I just want to give an idea, like how robust it is, and we can discuss it later on if you're interested in detail. So, uh, you see for the inverter, if we park our laser at three locations, uh, which these bars colors represent is the location, uh, you see that if we operate this, the same inverter gate into NTV, which is uh, reduce the vo supply voltage and, uh, to near threshold voltage, we have less leakage. And if we go to STV, to sub threshold, we have much more less leakage. And if 
We use CMOS with limiters for inverter, again, less leakage, but the main decrease in the leakage comes when we have the uh, differential logic. And differential logic shows a promise for, to be more robust towards optical probing attack. And the reason is that uh, since the, in the layout of these uh, differential logics, uh, the region carrying uh, complementary sig signals are uh, juxtaposed. So they are so close to each other. So when we are hitting it with a laser light, it is hard to, uh, for the attacker to deduce whether this region is carrying uh, logic zero or logic one because the laser has a limited resolution. So we also showed that optical probing can be used not only for attack, also for detect. So it's not, it's not all evil. It's, it can be used for good as well. And the, show, uh, the case study that we have taken is that uh, the Trojan detection. So we have, a found, we have a design we submitted to a foundry abroad that is untrusted, and we want to check whether some malicious uh, circuit has been inserted to our design or not. And uh, we assume that the, uh, which is a common assumption, that the uh, malicious foundry will insert the uh, malicious circuitry into empty areas of our chip. And uh, the original circuit is modified for uh, the reason that the they want to just like in, uh, have an information leakage or denial service of uh, denial of service for our chip, and we perform OP to uh, expose these uh, layout level digital trojans or in short LDTs. So this is an example. We have a layout on the left that is a, a hardware trojan uh, free layout, and then we submit our design to a foundry which is untrusted, and then there is an insertion of a. Uh, Malaysia circuitry into it, which in this case, as a test, uh, case study, is an inverter. Uh, and then we perform the optical probing on the uh, layout, uh, I mean, uh, hardware, uh, uh, hardware, Trojan, hardware Trojan free layout, which we possess. And also we perform optical probing on a chip that we have. And if we take a difference of these two, we see there are some changes. So there is this extra pattern shows uh, uh, a modification on our design. So it, is, it has Trojans. And we extend this, and we, up, uh, we uh, perform this study on a larger scale, which is in, we insert a tree uh, hardware Trojan into a RISC-V core, and they can be activate, activated upon a specific input patterns. These are the Trojans. I'm not going to go through the details of each Trojan, what do they do. Uh, and then we insert it to our RISC-V core, which we designed. And uh, next, we perform this obstacle probing on it. We have the golden layout, which we submitted. It's not, no modification has been uh, done on it. And then we assume that we got the chip and the chip is uh, modified. And we see that the, this uh, Trojans that we uh, inserted has uh, low uh, overhead, but still it might not be uh, detected using conventional methods, but optical probing uh, promises that can detect it. So we perform optical probing on the golden layout. We per perform the optical probing on the fabricated chip. Take a difference. We see three extra patterns, and which are the location shown here. And so now we get to the point, like open source hardware to improve OP. So commercial technologies currently, they, they bound you to a strict NDA. And each te technology has a different uh, manufacturing profile different doping sizes and the shapes that each transistor has. And um, improvement of uh, OP analysis can be achieved in simulation if we have enough chip uh, from a technology, from a certain technology, and then we load the information onto our simulator. We can uh, do it uh, more accurately, uh, the same analysis. And then we also can capture the process variation and temperature or uh, other uh, variation that in, in manufacturing can be caused on a chip. So this can be, uh, I mean, 
optical probing, uh, the simulator that we have developed for optical probing can benefit uh, open source hardware uh, to include all this uh, information and perform better uh, analysis. And then this tool can be handed to designer to design better before fabrication, so, so they know that their design is robust towards optical attacks, and security test, test engineers will be able to check their design uh, for Trojans. Yeah. And as a result, open source technology results in improved our optical simulator and cost reduction of OP analysis. And in conclusion, OP is shown to be a serious threat, and uh, it can be used to attack and boast defense. And uh, open source hardware uh, improves the accuracy of OP analysis, especially for the PVT. And then open source hardware reduces the cost of uh, designing a secure chip against optical probing. And uh, because we can have a large database of uh, reflection values from uh, various technologies that are open source and we can have them and load them in our simulator and use them. Yeah, that would be all. Thanks, Sajad. Questions? Yeah. Uh, Michael has yes. a question. Hi. Um, Hi. Okay, oh. this, one, this one will probably be pretty quick. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I didn't really follow the, uh, the maths and the, the physics mm -hmm. in the presentation, but um, Modern processes require things like um, quad patterning or extreme EUV lasers to make really small feature sizes. Can you really resolve those features with an IR laser? Uh, so the thing is that you can go down to 20 nanometer based on the nano lenses that you can achieve, but we are planning to find this extreme, like where we can do the optical probing when we are shrinking the technology down. This is one of our goals in the project. Okay. So that's okay, so you've proven that it works down to, to 20. You, we have a setup that can just like go to 20 now. Okay, but th th that was before quad patterning, right? I mean, yeah. Okay, uh, I found it very interesting that you can yeah. detect Trojans. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, when you compare the two, I mean, the authentic chip and the one with the, with the Trojans inserted, uh, do you need to run exactly the same uh, sequence of signals, or can you do it in average? Um, because the reason I'm asking is that if you have like a cryptographic unit, maybe using different keys, and, yeah. and each key is unique to each uh, unit, so you can't reproduce exactly the same computation in the two. So can you, you overcome that? Yeah, that's an uh, excellent question, actually. So the, one of the things that the obstacle probing promises is just like, you can detect Trojans uh, independent of the input that you apply. So the reason is just like if you remember, I mentioned about one extension of optical probing that you are uh, modulating the VDD signal of your chip. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, modulate the VDD signal, what happens is that all the gates that are connected to the uh, power uh, rail will get modulated. So any like you apply zero to the, all the input or any random uh, input that you want, uh, still you will get you will see whether an extra pattern has been added or not, because this modulation will be shown in the, I mean, will be on top of all the nodes of the transistors in a design. Okay, thank you. Yep. I have one last question. So just, just in yeah. general, the like optical um, attack method for chips wasn't fully across it. Is it like a well-established method to get keys and things out of the, the backside of flip chips? Uh, yeah, uh, there are several papers by our, by our colleagues. I have some uh, uh, slides that is an appendix. It shows like we showed how to uh, uh, our colleagues in Berlin, they were able to just like extract information from SRAM. Like this is the image you can see in huh. here. We have like this, some patterns are changing, right? Oh, you, you can see the ones and zeros. Yes, exactly. So. Huh. You can see it. So. Holy moly. What note? That's 20 nanometer or something? Uh, or? No, this is like, uh, I guess it was 19 nanometer. So yeah, it's okay. an uh, MSP 430, so from Texas Instrument. How could you defend against this? Would you have to have some layer of something it can be removed, under your so substrate, maybe? You, you can't remove it. So 
Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So the only thing you can do is just like design, redesign your cells. Redesign the logic cells that you, you are using. So we showed yeah. in some slide that you can just use differential logic gates. Oh, okay. Is, yeah. And that, does that come with an area overhead? It, it will double the area. Yeah. Yeah, but also there are other methods. Just like you can take the CMOS and reduce your uh, supply voltage. You reduce your speed, but you will, uh, oh, yeah. oh. you can see like we have STV. So we 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 did this experiment on a 45 nanometer PDK, yeah. open source. So the uh, nominal voltage for this technology was 1.2, I believe, and we reduced it up until for STV to 300 millivolt. Oh. And you can see like there is a huge difference between optical leakage. Cool. Of the CMOS and the STV CMOS. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, yeah. And it's already like masking or other schemes to do. Oh, sorry, yeah. So, how do masking and other schemes like change anything? Um, if anything is masked with any random number that is inside your chip, you don't see, can, can you recognize any of the patterns so the, anymore? Uh, the other thing is just like when you do masking, uh, so any, there, there have been several uh, countermeasures proposed, but at the end of the day, attacker looks at the output tries to put, uh, find the output of your block. And if they find the output is a flip-flop, they will just like park the laser there. And because this output has to go somewhere <laughs> in your chip to some other block. For Say if you have a beta stream that is going to the configuration block of FPGA and then it's, it's going to go to some other block. So if you uh, uh, attack the uh, output of the configuration block, you can so one final quick question. I mean, Michael was telling me that they at some point shined a laser, a laser at their chip and it crashed it. So like, is this completely non-invasive? Yeah, it is non-invasive because oh. we are using uh, 1,000 nanometer to 13,000, okay. 1,300 nanometer. So it is non-invasive. If you go below that, it will be invasive. Okay. So you could like actually flip bits? Yes, you can. But, but in this uh, analysis, no, that I have yeah. shown, yeah, okay. you cannot. Uh, I don't know, sit, sit it there for a week testing every bit in the chip, you might find something interesting eventually. That's what they do, right? So, Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll call time. Stefan's calling time. So let's take the speaker again. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you.